please stand and welcome Steve as he comes. Come on, church. Love you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Here, Steve. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Dan and Fee. Just love you guys. Anybody blessed here? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and, and be glad in it. Wow. Someone's going to get a revelation, the difference between rejoicing and being glad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I've got Jason. I've got three team members. Why don't you guys stand up right now? Jason, you come on up. I got Jason, Patty, and Jordan. These guys are going to minister a little later. Uh, and they're, we're all from Bethel Church in Redding, California. That's where I live. Yep, don't hold that against me that I'm from California. By the way, go 49ers. I know that was, that's dangerous for a speaker to do in the beginning. Might decrease favor with some. <laughs> Jason is a, from Canada, third year student, uh, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, serving me this year. Uh, everybody say hi, Jason. I've asked him to pray over you and report to you what he's heard. Are you guys ready? What do you got? Oh, boy. All right. This is what I heard Thursday night as I was praying for you. Um, I'm going to read it because there is just a few few things I don't want to miss. Uh, this is what I heard. You are, everyone here, you are a royal priesthood. You are dynamic, influential leaders to other leaders and kings and queens. You have the grace to lead paupers into princesses and princes. You have a royal impact and will reach businesses and government. You are a supernatural networking strategist. You have the unique ability to connect leaders to leaders and kings with kings through your adaptability. And so I just release that over you right now, that government, kings, leaders will be influenced and impacted by who you are. Yes. <clears throat> and then I just want to raise a couple, uh, couple short ones right here. Um, the Lord is... The Lord is releasing pain of arthritis in your knee right now, in this, this morning. And then also, uh, God is removing shame from your life at this moment. From not what you've done, but from what others have done to you. And so I just release you from that shame in Jesus' name. Bless you. Amen. Give it up for Jace. Hey, Jordan, can you come on up right now? Everybody say, hi, Jordan. hi Jordan. He's on staff at Bethel Church, and he's from this. He's got a few testimonies. And by the way, where are you from? All right. Yeah, t- can you share that? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, everyone. I'm, I'm from around here. I'm just from uh, Huntley Lake in the Hills area. And so when I saw Steve was coming to St. Charles, I said, I need to come. <laughs> so I'm so happy to be here. And uh, <clears throat> what I just want to release to you guys, excuse me. <clears throat> You know, I, I've been on this journey with God and, and just sold out for Christ since I left high school. You know, something happened to me just about a month ago, and I want to share with you. You know, I was recently on a bus, and, and I'm one of those Christians that most people look at and, like, he's really weird, you know. <laughs> he's like, why is he speaking to me? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I was on a bus one time, and late, probably around... 11 p.m., 1 a.m., something around there, and, uh, and I just get up, and I, I say, hey, I'm going to share the gospel right now, and so I get up, and I just preach and say, hey, Jesus loves you, and he has a great plan for your life, and I, I shared my short story in, in just 30 seconds, and then I sit down feeling a little bit overwhelmed by what I shared, <laughs> you know, with very big eyes staring at me, and I looked over, and there was a, a Muslim man, and, and And I say, hey, do you know what it means to be born again? And he said, I have no idea, but whatever you have, I want that. (laughs) And and what I realized is, and I led him to to Christ right there, and he's getting plugged in. But what's so fun is, you know, when you're with God, you know, you used to get get so nervous about what I'd say and how would I say it. (laughs) 
And I, I've come to the conclusion that I have more faith in God's ability to anoint what I'm going to say wow. rather than my own ability to sound anointed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have more faith in God's ability to anoint what, what I'm going to say rather than my own ability to sound anointed, to sound good. You know, I mean, I could say peanut butter. <laughs> And people say, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> and and <laughs> I just released that to you guys, supernatural boldness, you know, and just shame, breaking shame off of, did I say the right thing? Did, did it sound good enough? Yeah. Share one more quick story. Uh, being on staff with Bethel, you know, you're around giant sharks, it feels like. I mean, these guys, man, you got Steve here. <laughs> I mean, it just feels like a big shark to me. You know, with the gospel, <laughs> in a good way, <laughs> and a friendly shark. But um, you know, one of the things I get to do is is lead uh, people on the streets in evangelism in, over all of Reading. And so one time, this student comes to me, shares his story. He's from uh, India. He's one of the students at Bethel. Thick accent, and barely can speak English. <laughs> He goes, I have a story to share. I said, so tell me. He was on the streets at Target. He sees a young girl, very sad. He goes up to her and says, you know, hey, what's going on? Why are you so sad? And, and, and you could tell she's a little overwhelmed. She says, my mom has cancer right now, and she's in the hospital. And, you know, and Judah just, whew, he got so excited. <laughs> he said, get her on the phone. And so he, this young girl gets her mom on FaceTime. And he goes, I'm just going to pray for you right now. And so he prays. He says, you know, in Jesus' name, be healed of cancer. And as he prayed, this woman on the phone says, I feel something on my body. I feel it's hot. I feel my body is hot. And just crazy story, right? So two weeks go by. He doesn't know her. There was no contact, no relationship. And he's in Target again. It, but yeah, but this time it looked different because she was very happy. <laughs> she comes running up to Judah and says, Judah, you have no idea what happened. He said, my mom got completely healed of cancer from the hospital. And, and, and Judah said, well, <laughs> what are you doing Sunday? And so Judah brings her to church and they get both born again in the service. Why? Because it wasn't by a good argument. Yeah, it was, it's the power of God that leads men to salvation. You know, it's not in fancy words. It's not in great arguments. But it's the power of God. So right now what I want to just release, and then Steve's going to come back. But, huh? Let me jump. Yeah, yeah just stay up here. If you, got, if you want um, more of what Jordan is talking about, the, the evangelism, the creative ways to release healing, just stand up, and then Jordan's going to pray over you. Amen. Yeah, I, I just want to pray supernatural, creative miracles, signs and wonders, crazy God stories. You're going to be coming to the pastors of Life Church and going, man, I got a story to share. I just released. Why don't you just... Put your hands in front of you. I just release supernatural grace. Yes. Yeah, just, just as Jesus said, heal the sick. Raise the dead. Yeah, cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. I just pray supernatural power on your hands that as you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Yeah, I just I pray right now that uh, I see uh, yeah, bone diseases being broken when you lay hands on the sick. Yeah, I see right now over your hands, you know, you're going to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to be so healed that they start jumping. <laughs> I see you guys uh, in businesses preaching the gospel. And I just want to end with this. You're going to lay hands on cancer, and it's going to dissolve. And it's going to happen so much, you're going to start looking for cancer. <laughs> At a certain, you're going to get out of this, this service and go, you know, who has cancer? I want to find them. And so I just release grace over this house, grace over this church to see cancer destroyed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just say, I receive it. Wow. My, oh my. Sounds like the book of Acts. 
Wow. Just, um, it's just, I love that song, I Exalt Thee. You know, there's a guy in, in, named Pete Sanchez Jr. in 1977 who wrote that song. 47 years ago, we're still singing it. Yeah, he, I'm sure he, he didn't write that song and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a song in worship so they'll sing it 50 years from now. <laughs> he just was overflow of his heart. And, and, and I'm hearing that, that what's happening right now with people and the ideas the Lord's given you, 50 years from now, the people are still going to be using those ideas are still going to be uh, powerful things in the kingdom. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for just releasing long-term thinking over us. Long-term thinkers are healthy. Short-term thinkers are not healthy. I remember I was in South Africa a few years ago, and um, I went to this rural town called Velcom, and I go to a Thursday night meeting, and just... Uh, there was about 300 people in a Thursday night meeting. It was on fire. Someone just say fire. fire. And, and so I asked the, the pastor, his name was Paul. He was a fourth generation pastor. And I asked him his story. He said his, his um, great grandfather was a drunkard and he decided to go to a John G. Lake meeting. Now, some of you know John G. Lake is a great healing evangelist, uh, early 1900s. And he went to the meeting with a bottle of alcohol in his back pocket. Let's laugh at that. Ha, 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 And in that meeting, he got radically saved. Just say radically saved. And two weeks later, he tells his wife, I believe I'm called to go into the ministry. <laughs> now, I love the story of the mustard. The, Jesus told the story, the, the parable of the mustard seed. He said it's the smallest of seeds, but then it grows up into a tree, and the birds of the air live in its branches. Now, here I am. About a hundred years after that, he goes into that meeting. Someone say a hundred years. A hundred years. Now, the Lord's releasing long-term thinking this morning. Here I am. I'm, I'm in the tree of the seed that happened to him a hundred years ago. That church has a great Christian school, day school for kids. They're, they're reaching the nations, and it all started with one person who made a decision, I'm going to go to a meeting. And some would, you know, look at a guy like that, and, you know, unless they're really flowing in the Holy Spirit, and say, that man doesn't have much potential. Let's laugh at that. Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh -huh, yeah, he's got an alcohol, you know, a bottle of booze. You know, he, he doesn't have... Uh, but no, that, that man. And, and the Lord is doing things here, and he's doing things in people's lives here, that, that is a is hundred years from now, people are going to, there's, there's big trees are coming out of what's happening here. Big trees. This church, uh, who knows? Every great thing. I mean, Bethel Church is reaching thousands. Someone, it started 70 years ago with someone, just a, a small handful of people. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that this, this thing, Jesus, I mean, the father, he thinks through genealogies. So-and-so begat so-and-so. Because <laughs> he wants us to get it that this thing is, is long-term. We got the baton right now. Yep, we got it. We're going to take this thing as far as we can take it. We're going to pass it on. Even some of our prophetic words, the fullness of our prophetic words are not going to happen in our own lifetime. When, when, when people prophesy to you or prophesy to a ministry or to a city, it, it's not just in the lifetime of the people or person receiving it. It's to their whole family tree, their spiritual tree, their, 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 their children. 
So, Lord, thank you today for uh, just opening our eyes to long term, because this thing is bigger than you know. It's very difficult to know how big what you're a part of is while you're a part of it. Let me say that again. It's very difficult to know how big what you're a part of while you're a part of it. <laughs> that was a challenging to say. <laughs> I mean, how many of you know the disciples were part of a big move called Jesus? How many know that's a pretty big move to be a part of? Yeah. <laughs> but they lost the wonder. James and John's mom comes in. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, yeah, hey, Jesus, I got a request, you know. I've got my son's two sons sit on your right hand and on your left. And then the other, other disciples were irritated. Ha, <laughs> ha. I, I just release wonder over you. Because every, every season, there's things about this season that, that, that are not perfect. And it takes people with spiritual eyes and discernment to understand what they're really a part of. And I see God doing that. I see the Lord just breaking off today uh, uh, just uh, victim mindsets. I, I see him breaking off offense. I see him breaking off uh, not bringing yourself fully because the people around you, you don't think they're doing the right. I, I see the Lord breaking that thing off. And releasing wonder. <sighs> Let me share a few other things. It's a beginning ramble fest. <laughs> I'm so glad for a local church like this. I got saved at 19. I was a burnout, paranoid hippie who actually had hair. I love, I love the word from our brother there. You know, this is a wellspring of, <clears throat> of healing and deliverance. And my spirit band has hair just like him. <laughs> my spirit band. <laughs> but I remember coming in, I got a headband. I don't know, I have a, a bandana on my head. I remember coming to the church first, first time, sitting in the back row. And I was so glad for a local church that I came into, who people loved me. People believed in me. People helped me when I said, I don't know if I can make it. And I had a church. I had a place where, and, and I just say thank you for this church. Thank you for people called in this church. Because God's plan is for us to unite with people and become the body of Christ in an area, in a region, and influence the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for even new people who are visiting. Thank you for there's some of you. The Lord's going to graft you into this place. He's going to graft you in, and, and, and you grow up by by being in in covenant relationships. You grow up, and by the size of this church, you grow up. I mean, Bethel Church, it's thousands. You don't have to grow up to attend there. You can hide. You can you can dance a jig and worship. Give a couple Ramba Shambas. <laughs> Look spiritual. But you don't have to grow up. But here you do. Remember, as a young leader, I said, Lord, I want to be a man of God. He said, okay, get married. <laughs> some of some of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I get it. Because you're going to learn more about being a man of God than covenant relationships and seminary, Bible schools, whatever. I, which I'm all for that. But it's in relationships. If your assignment is to be a monk in a cave and live by yourself all the time, burning incense, you can look spiritual. But you don't need to grow up. 
And the Lord's doing something. I'm hearing in my spirit, the Lord is doing something in relationships with people. He, he's causing people who've had a tendency to have uh, patterns and, and, and uh, tendencies in how to do relationships and responses and things. He's taking you higher. He's taking you higher. Because where you're going, the Lord is that you're going somewhere. Just say, I'm going somewhere. Where you're going, there's going to be a need for a higher way to do relationships. There's the, where you're going, you can't be triggered anymore. Mm -hmm. Where you're going, you can't withdraw your heart from people who disappoint you. Where you're going, just say, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> where you're going, the way you think about people, is you're, it's going to go higher for you to go there. I mean, the elder brother mindset in Luke 15 is the, the default of the elder brother mindset is to first see what's wrong with a person or place. The default of the father mindset is to first see what's right with a person or place. That's how you know you're moving from elder brother mindset to father mindset because your default is to first see what's right with a person. It doesn't mean you're gullible. It doesn't mean you don't have boundaries in relationships, but you're looking for what's right. I used to think I was spiritual because I could see what was wrong with you. <laughs> yep, amen. I've got the great gift of discernment. The Lord says, no, you just got a critical spirit. <laughs> you just have a critical spirit. Where you're going, you can't take that thing with you. The Lord's doing something in relationships. Some of the people that frustrate you the most or that you're afraid of or that you're offended at, God's going to have you see them with new eyes. Because the Lord is going to increase your ability to influence different kinds of people. I used to only like the people who were just like me. Yep, I like the me I see in you. You get it. You get it. You get it. Yeah, you, you and me. We, maha, we get it. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. I'm, by the way, I'm from Bethel Church on staff. We have our own ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries. And we have an assignment to ignite hope. And where there's hope, there's joy, there's peace. And renewing the mind and talk a lot about that and and I, I've got seven grandchildren and my oldest Caden he's he's a senior in high school right now and I love Caden he lives in Reading and um, when he was about three we were in a park in Reading and it was one of those parks, I was with his family and my wife, and it's one of those parks that closed the gate at dusk. And it was getting late, and it was getting, we needed to go, and Caden was really slow, and everybody else was by the cars. I'm kind of on the trail, and Caden's way back here, and I knew I needed to motivate Caden to get moving. Uh-huh. So I used some powerful words to get him to get moving. <clears throat> I said, Caden, let's race. But he didn't move at all. <laughs> so I knew I needed to step it up to a higher level of motivational words. So I said this, Caden, I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> and, and without moving at all, Caden said to me, I'm winning too. <laughs> Just say, I'm winning too. 
Wow, I thought, this guy's in last place, and he thinks he's a winner. When I grow up, I want to be like him. <laughs> By the way, how God makes great leaders is he makes us successful on the inside when we don't look successful on the outside. That's how leaders are made. You get successful on the inside. So, yeah. But but Caden was a winner because he wasn't in the same race as his grandpa was in. He was in the race of what three-year-olds do. Bird! Whoa, look at that bird! Leaf! That's a neat leaf. There's a dog! Let me see a dog. Some of us think we're losers because we don't know what race we're in. Let's laugh at these things that um, may try to indicate to you that you are losing. How about this? <clears throat> you are a loser. Laugh after this, by the way. Why don't you warm up your laughter first? Ha <laughs> ha, okay, thank you. All right, okay, here we go. Wouldn't want anybody to laugh suddenly and pull a laugh muscle. All right. <clears throat> you are a loser if you're not the most beautiful and handsome person around. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Yep, you're losing. You're, you're a loser if you do not have the most money. Ha ha. Uh oh. Uh. You are a loser if you do not have a whole lot of social media followers. Ha ha. Let's give an extra laugh on that one. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I lived. Even after I came to the Lord, I lived for a long time believing I was a loser, believing I was less than. I mean, you know, obviously media, commercials, um, just are all, they're just trying to send us the message that we need, that without what they have to offer, we're going to lose. And I'm all for getting better. I'm all for uh, improving. But ultimately, we have to believe we're a winner. Just say, say I'm winning too. Now, one of the reasons uh, why I felt like a loser for so long is because I didn't know what my real enemies were. You know, you look at uh, like a verse in... Ephesians 6, 17, where it's in the, the middle of the, or it's a part of the armor of God. And it says, uh, and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, now, because I didn't know, because if you know how to take up the sword of the spirit properly, it's going to cause you to win. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.18, Paul told a young leader named Timothy, he said this, war, a good warfare. Now, how many of you know a good warfare is a warfare you win? <laughs> war, a good warfare according to the prophecies spoken to you. Fight with what you believe God has told you. Timothy, war. Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You got Matthew 4.4. 4. You got where Jesus was tempted by the devil. He, the devil said, turn these stones into bread. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word. Now, now, the Greek word there for word is rhema which is the individual part of God's word that he makes real to you for you to live by and fight with. Same word in Ephesians 6, 7, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema. 
rhema of God. Now it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. So the, the quality of my life depends on my identifying what I believe God has told me. Let me say it again. The quality of my life depends on my identifying what I believe God has told me. The only way I can truly live is by living by the word of God. I mean, only truly win. Now, I can put up with a lot of junk if I've got a word from the Lord. I can put up with a lot of things around me I don't like if I've got a word from the Lord. Someone go, ah, ah. I can put up with a lot of outward non-success if I've got a word from the Lord. But, I, but the only way, if I don't have a word from the Lord, the only way I can live is if things are going well. Let's laugh at that. Ha ha. Yep, I can live now. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking today to radical influencers. I'm talking today to people. You wouldn't be in this room if God didn't have a higher purpose for your life. You're living in a purpose right now, but you're being prepared for something greater. That's what vision is all about. Without, the vision, without vision, people perish. Vision is, is that, hey, there's greater things ahead. I am significant. I'm going to make things better. That's what vision is. But that only comes from a word. It only comes from, okay, I, I believe I've heard. Now, in Numbers 13, you've got a fascinating story where Moses, they had just left the children of Israel. He had delivered them out of Israel. And in verse 1 of Numbers 13, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out. Say, spy out. Spy out. <laughs> out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel. He's given it to them. Then in verse 17, Moses sent them to spy out. Say, spy out. To spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go. And, and it gives them instructions. All right, so they go. At verse 21, they went up and spied out. Say spied out. <laughs> they spied out the land. Wow. Okay. And, and, and it says when they came back, verse 25, at the end of the 40 days, they returned from spying out. Say spying out. <laughs> and this thing is all over. I always kind of secretly wanted to be a spy. <laughs> that sounds like an exciting job. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and I'll just, uh, I won't, for the sake of time, I'll, I'll share kind of the story. Many of you know it. So 12, 12 men go. They come back after 40 days. They break up into two groups of people. Two groups of people saw the exact same set of circumstances and put a different conclusion on what they saw. By the way, the circumstance that you're facing personally or nationally isn't as important as the conclusion you place on it. The circumstance that you're facing, either personally or nationally, is not as important as the conclusion that you place on it. Yeah, it was a, you know, they, they come back, they bring fruit, they're carrying them on sticks, the, the, the grapes are so big. It's a good land. It's a good. But, but the 10 spies, just, just, by the way, 10 spies, just say boo. Boo. <laughs> The 10 spies said they came back, the Bible says, came back with an evil report. <clears throat> they said, hey, it's a great place, but there's too many ites there. <laughs> Canaanites, Hittites, Jebusites. <laughs> Even saw the sons of Anak there. We're like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we are in theirs. Ha ha. 
By the way, how we see ourselves will be how we'll interpret the world. <laughs> how we see ourselves will how we'll, how we'll interpret. It, it'll, it'll all, how we see ourselves will, will affect how we think other people see us. I don't think they went up and interviewed the Giants. Hey, uh, Mr. Giant, how do you see us? <laughs> I just, our, our own perceptions, we, we, we transfer that into the atmosphere. That's why identity teaching is so powerful. That's why the Lord is causing you to break off getting your beliefs from your feelings and past and getting your beliefs from what he says. But Joshua and Caleb, they had a different perspective. Someone say yay for Joshua and Caleb. Yay. They said, let us go up at once. We are well able to overcome it. Just say, we are well able to overcome it. Well say it again. Well say it louder. Well but the 10 spies, bummer for us. We're born at a bad time. Yeah, we're born. At, yeah, well, I wish we would have been born at another time when things would have been easier. <laughs> Let's laugh at that. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're a victim. We're a victim to the hour we live in. <laughs> but Joshua and Caleb. By the way, I'm talking to Joshua and Caleb's today. I can understand Joshua. He hung out in a tent of meeting with Moses. If you study his life, and he spent extra time. But this Caleb guy, he hung out with all the pessimists, all the grumblers, all the people feasting on CNN and Fox News. <laughs> yeah, all the experts are why it's not going to happen. Why? He was different. The Bible says in, in the Numbers 14 that Caleb had a different spirit. Just say, I have a different spirit. He had a different spirit, man. He, he somehow, he broke out of the pack. He wasn't in the tent of meeting. He just said, I'm not going to go in this direction. I'm not going to float downstream with the victim mindset, pessimism. We can't do this. The problems are too big. So I'm going to be different. He broke out of the pack. Just say, I'm breaking out of the pack. But the point I really want to get at is that Moses had them spy out the land. The reason, the purpose was not so they would come back with a conclusion on whether they could win or not. The purpose of it was to understand their opponent and get a battle plan because the Lord had already said, I'm giving you this land. I'm giving it to you, but you need to understand who you're fighting against. You need to understand that. Faith isn't blind. Faith doesn't say there's no problems. Faith just says, I, I, yeah, there's problems, but God's already said I'm going to have the victory. God's already said I'm winning too. Just say I'm winning too. But here's the thing. I get into leadership. Nobody ever told me who I was fighting. I had no idea. I had this nebulous idea, the devil's my enemy. Yeah, he's my enemy. And that's true, but I didn't know his tactics. So I just had this nebulous idea. And, um, and so I was just rebuking until my rebuker was worn out. <laughs> I was binding everything that moved. <laughs> I, I pastored for 10 years in central Nevada, and I coached. Uh, by the way, the Lord's doing something with somebody who's watching online right now. Somebody new is watching online. The Lord brought you 
to this, and, and this is the day of breakthrough. I, I, while I was pastoring there, I coached the high school girls' basketball team. Any basketball players? Yes. He'll, wow. Yeah. And, and I coached the high school boys' baseball team. And I really, I dedicated my love for sports to the Lord a long time ago, and he's used that. By the way, the Lord's causing you to dedicate the things you love in this season, and he's going to use it for his glory. And and how many of you know if you're a good basketball coach, it's a good idea to scout out who you're playing the next game? I didn't coach by faith. Yeah, we're just going to show up. We're just going to show up and see what we're going to face. We're going to be reactive. Let's laugh at that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to wait to see what happens. Oh, oh no. They've got a six-foot-five girl center. Oh, no. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Okay. I got, okay. We got to get a plan. I didn't know that. I didn't know we were going to face that. Ha, ha, ha. That's how, that's how my leadership was. Nobody told me who I was going to face. I didn't know. I, I didn't know that everybody faces the same giants in the new covenant. I mean... The, the, in the old covenant, there were literal giant beings that needed to be defeated. But in the new covenant, what needs to be defeated is mindsets. They're called strongholds. Take up the sword of the spirit. It's called a sword because you're supposed to kill something with it. Not people. I want to clarify in case, in case anybody's tweeting. But you, you kill mindsets, you kill strongholds. Second Corinthians 10 4 says, The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. And the context of that is talking about strongholds in our own thinking, arguments, every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. I, I, nobody told me what I was going to face. And so, because I didn't know <clears throat> when I faced these mindsets, I became reactive. And I wasn't proactive, and I felt like, okay, I'm the only one. Now, let me tell you some of the mindsets that we all get to kill. You guys ready? All right. Everybody in the room gets to kill the victim mindset. Everybody in the room gets to kill disappointment. Everybody in the room gets to kill discouragement. Everybody in the room gets to kill regret. Everybody in the room gets to kill unworthiness. Everybody in the room gets to kill shame. But nobody told me. I, I, I wish someone said, spy out what, what is going to be standing in your way to possess God's promises. It's those things. And they're all based on lies. They're all strongholds are developed in our lives by repeated agreement with lies. That's how we get strong. Negative. Yeah. We get positive ones by repeated agreement with truth. You can get hope strongholds. You can get joy strongholds. You can get love strongholds. Forgiveness strongholds. It's, but I didn't know about the, the negative ones. So I'm a young leader, and uh, I... I, I got discouraged all the time. And the Lord says, Steve, there's one common denominator in all this discouragement. It's you. You always seem to be involved. (laughs) It's different circumstances, but it's always you. He said, your discouragement is a bigger problem almost always than what you're discouraged about. And where you're going, Steve, you can't take this tendency to be easily discouraged with you. You're going somewhere. I remember battling a season of discouragement and, um, and 
I felt like quitting my first pastorate, and I said, Lord, I need a word. Because, man, the old word wasn't big enough to fight the stuff. <laughs> so I have a thought. Steve, I haven't called you to fail. I've called you to succeed. Good thought. But I don't tell anybody. But I'm thinking about it. I go to a pastor prayer meeting. Share, I'm, I'm battling discouragement. They gather around me, lay hands on me. The first guy who prays, Father, I thank you that you haven't called Steve to fail. You've called him to succeed. I said, that's God. I just got a word. I got a rhema. I got a word. I can live now because I got a word. And I started fighting with that thing. And that's you can find many scriptures to support that. I started fighting. I wait. God hasn't called me to fail. He's called me to succeed. That thing would try to get on me. No! I've got a word. And I remember in that season, the Lord said, Steve, I want you to get excited when you start feeling discouraged. Ha <laughs> ha. So I remember as I pastoring the church and people would be coming in late. Sound person call, I can't come. <laughs> Wrong song up on the overhead projector. <laughs> and there's a misspelling. <laughs> ha ha ha. And that, yeah. You know that thing? <laughs> and the Lord says, this, this moment, when you're starting to feel discouraged, this moment is more important to you than getting slain in the Holy Spirit. This is it. This is it. It's trying to get back on me again. And, and all of these things. My, my feeling of discouragement is almost always a bigger problem than what I'm discouraged about. My feeling of regret is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel regret about. My feeling of shame is almost always a bigger problem than what I feel shame about. And I'm not saying we don't deal with issues and we take this message and just pretend everything's okay and we're never making things right. But I'm, I'm making a bigger point. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know that every Christian gets to kill the victim mindset. It's in the game against all of us. He's a big guy. He's talking trash. And he's saying, it may work for somebody else, but it's not going to work for you. You are at a disadvantage. And whatever we feel we're a disadvantage of, that's the victim mindset. I am at a disadvantage because, and fill it in. I'm too old. I don't have enough money. My family situation's a mess. Uh, I'm in a bad geographical location. Uh, I'm... You know, people, uh, leaders don't acknowledge the gift that's on me. <laughs> I'm a victim. Everybody gets to kill the victim mindset. The feeling of being a victim is almost always a bigger problem than what we feel a victim from. And if we don't get that, then we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to be reactive and, and, and we're going to do a lot of laps in the wilderness. I'm tired of laps. There, there's that cacti again. There it is. Seen that 25 times. I always seem to bump into it, too. Ouch. Nobody told me disappointments in the game. Everybody, I did not. You know, I'm thinking, I'm the only one who feels the way I feel. Ha ha. Nobody told me everybody gets to kill disappointment with a word. We all get disappointed. Every one of us gets disappointed with God, 
ourselves, people, leaders over us, people we're leading. If, you, if you're battling disappointment, welcome to the club. It's good to have you. But nobody told me. Our feeling of disappointment. That's it. That's, a, that, that's what I got to go. What's the reason? What's the belief system? Because if I can take that thing out, I'm going to possess. Shame. Shame's in the game. <laughs> shame is subtle. Man. I mean, there's so many different kinds of shame. There's appearance shame. There's family situation shame. There's educational level shame. There's possessions shame. There's vocation shame. It's really, it's a, it, 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 shame is a feeling of embarrassment or feeling less than when we all face it. The shame thing, nobody told me. Everybody feels shame. But we, get to, we get to take shame out. I've got uh, an old truck and, on our property in Redding and don't drive it very often. Doesn't look too cool. <clears throat> but it does the job. You guys get that? Yeah, I hardly ever drive it. But I'm, I'm going to the dump one day, taking some stuff to dump. I say, hey, Wendy, you want to go with me? My wife, yeah. So we're driving, and I say, let's stop at our tax place first on the way back. And I drive in with my old truck, and the moment I drive in, this other man drives in with, it must be an $80,000 truck. <laughs> and he and his wife get out. <laughs> and I get out at the same time. I felt something. I said, it's not gone yet completely. <laughs> I haven't killed shame completely. It just reminded me, I need to take that thing out to where I get successful on the inside when I don't look successful on the outside. And that's where, that's where the Lord's taken us. Pessimism, everybody gets to kill pessimism. Takes no effort at all to be pessimistic. Just be a, like a dead fish floating downstream. <laughs> Takes no effort. As long as I've been alive, known Jesus, there's always a reason to be greatly pessimistic. Let's laugh at that. Ha ha. Ha ha. It's always a reason. But I didn't know pessimism was in the game. And I get to kill pessimism. I get to kill regret. Whew. If only, if only, if only. Anybody have any if onlys? Man, I got, oh, if only. Oh, if only. I missed that opportunity. I, mean, that's a, I shouldn't have done that. I, oh, I won't. <laughs> and it, it, it comes back on me. It, it, it want, there's a, that stronghold wants to, wants to reappear or it wants to create an emotion of, of that, that de-energizes me. Take a sword. I've been forgiven. All things work together for good for those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Let me, let me wrap this up and Patty's going to come and release a word as well. Um, I'm, some of us just need to get mad. I'm winning too. Just say I'm winning too. The Lord's breaking off losing cultures out of people today. I remember I played high school football in uh, our high school, North Coast of California. We had a losing culture. And, and we got a new coach when I was a freshman. He brought a winning culture. He was different. He had a different spirit. And he, he thought we were winners. 
He thought that if we could just change the way we thought about ourselves, we would win. By the way, both those who think they can and those who think they can't are both right. So he was like a preacher. And he'd, he'd be in the locker room before the game. Boys, we've scouted out the opponent. Mm -hmm. here's, here's, their, here's their good players. Here's their tendencies. Here's, here, here's our plan against that. Here's, our, here's what we're going to do. We, we, had, uh, we had trained. We had got it, you know, endurance. We knew our roles. And, and, and he was reminding us. But, but, but then at the end, he was shouting. I mean, he was, he was so full of fire and, and, and so inspired me. I thought, Coach, open the door. I got to hit somebody. If you don't open the door, I'm going to rip a locker off the wall. We're our own coach. We're our own coach. We're all, we're like in a, you know, Chris Vallett and Bethel just gave a great word. It's like halftime right now. We're at halftime. We're, we, you know, some of us are in halftime, and uh, we, we think we're losing the scores against us. But I want to tell you this. The Lord's already said you're a winner. He's already said I've given you the land. He's already said these promises are yours. Now go take what I'm saying and fight with it. And know what you're fighting. Know, know, know that these mindsets are, are, are what are going to come down in this season. They're, just say, they're coming down. I'm winning too. I'm winning too. Yeah, and the Lord is, I just say, thank you, Lord, just for in this room, people who are... Uh, maybe like me many years ago, and I didn't know. I was reactive, just reacting against everything, wishing those things weren't happening and uh, wishing those feelings weren't coming on me. Just wishing. I, I wish I'd feel better. There's things here again, and, and, and something clicked. Something clicked where I began to see the feelings that were rooted in these strongholds were the thing that I was going to use the word against. And I see this morning, I see this morning that God is releasing in you a, a, a breakthrough Caleb anointing. There, there's a different spirit that you have. And something, something is getting in you this morning. And, and, and here's, I, I believe this, something's getting on you and you're going to have to work really hard for it not to work in you. Because I realize, I've been lied to. I love to listen to T.D. Jakes, great African-American preacher. One of my goals is to be the white T.D. Jakes. <laughs> I'm making progress. <laughs> but I remember he, he's, <laughs> I'm a winner too. I'm winning, yeah, I'm winning too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. so, some may say I'm not. But I, uh, I see way behind. But every great thing starts small. He started in West Virginia. He, early on, he said, man, his house, his power was off. Water was shut off. His car was repossessed because um, he couldn't pay the bill. He walks in his house one day, and he says this to his house. You're lying to me. You're lying to me. You're trying to tell me who I am, what my potential is, and I refuse to receive the message you're trying to send me. God's an equal opportunity God. He has not put any limitations on what you can become in your life. There's no, just say no limits. There's no, there's no limitation to what you can become. The only thing, nobody's past can stop them, but current beliefs can. So if you guys uh, 
Patty, why don't you come on up? If you guys receive this message, say, I receive it. I'll never be the same again. Something happened in me this morning. It was supernatural. The spirit of revelation is upon me. I'm taking up the sword of the spirit. And I am defeating the giants of unworthiness, victim mindset, disappointment, discouragement, pessimism, regret. I'm killing them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. All right. Patty is Jordan's mom, which is so good. So you're from this area, too, and yeah. still got a house. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're just living and running for just one school year. Um, I'm a third year student at BSSM. Uh, two of my kids completed the program, and I just felt called to do it as well. And uh, I did two years online, and the third year in person has been so fantastic. But um, the reason I'm here today is because I wanted to be a part of Steve, because you can see how contagious his spirit is and what he carries. And I, just, I needed that in my life, so that's why I'm here. And I have an amazing family that's here as well, so yeah. So um, the, Steve gave us direction. He asked us to pray over Life Church and just... Just listen to the Lord and see what he has for you. And so as I was praying, what I heard the Lord say was, I am feeling over Life Church authority. The Lord has great leaders here at Life Church. Dan and Fee, Josh, Pat, Mel, and her husband. And I see the leaders in the community are reaching out to other local churches because we don't want to do this alone. We want to be in community. And they want, they want you to reach out to local government as well and make a way for revival. I saw a picture of the, a boulder, a giant boulder. And you know when you throw a little pebble in the water and you see the, the water go out? Well, the Lord gave me a picture of a boulder being thrown right into that Fox River right there. Yeah. And it just is its spreading out. Your influence is spreading out. It can't help it because the Lord is in you. And I believe that's what he's doing. Wow. He gave me a verse. He also wait, wait, one more part that I wanted to share is that there's so many people walking around in St. Charles, Lake in the Hills, Huntley, they don't even know they need the Lord. They're just living their life. They're just walking along. They're just working, coming home, and doing it all over again. And the Lord's using you to awaken the people that are dead. And so the verse that the Lord gave me was, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. And I just believe that's true, that you are the great light. The Lord in you is the great light. And it's not just the leaders of the church. This whole church is full of leaders, and he's calling you out. And I just felt like, <clears throat> as I was thinking about the Fox River, because I'm a cyclist, and I've, I've biked the Fox River Trail many, many a time, from Lake in the Hills to St. Charles. And so I know the power of that force. It, the Lord showed me that, that that is living water, that that water that's coming through is going to splash all of you. The, and the angel of the liver, angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. We are on the main street right here. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, life church right here, with a fresh crop each month. That means fresh lives right here. Fresh bread is going out. 
And Lord, I just want everyone to receive that. I want, to, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to open your hands because the Lord has something for you. Lord, the, the, the leaders of this church are not meant to do this alone. This is the work of the church. We are the church. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would just anoint these people with the living water that's right here. I pray they receive, receive a fresh splash from heaven. Anoint them, Lord, to go and preach the word, to live it out in their work, to live it out in their neighborhood, to live it out in this church. The Lord doesn't want us just to minister to the people inside these four walls. He wants us to go out. There is a great harvest coming, and he needs more workers because the harvest is going to be so big. So I pray that anyone who's being anointed would just feel that freshness, the spirit of the Lord coming on them. I just pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. Say, I receive it. Hey, let me put a couple slides up if you want to connect with us. Do we have the slides? There's my beautiful wife, Wendy, my joy mentor, Buddy the dog. And we, I do a weekly podcast, weekly blog. Uh, if you want more of what you've heard here, you can find us at ignitinghope.com. QR code, ignitinghopeacademy.com. We have a lot of online courses. And we are here to help your belief systems go to a level you never thought existed. And then we also have an event happening on Valentine's Day called a Negativity Fast Positivity Feast. And that's coming up. I was in a season of heavy food fasts, and the Lord said, Steve, I, your food fasts aren't doing much good. <laughs> so I love your heart to separate yourself to me but the positive of the food fast plus the negative of your general overall negativity and pessimism equals a big zero. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've got a suggestion. Why don't you go on a 40-day negativity fast? Go after the belief systems. And, and, and so this is a... We'll leave this slide up for a little while. This is starting Wednesday. It's, for, it's free. You get an email every day with a lie to fast and a truth to feast on. Plus, get just a quick little de written devotional by me on, on just renewing the mind, faith, hope, joy. It's powerful. We have thousands have done it through the years. And so we'd love for you to be a part of that if you want more of, of this message. And I've got some books back there if you're just uh, on, on, on hope, on joy got some kids books on, on, on beliefs and on, on just laughing at lies got some books on declarations because you can't change your life without changing how you talk you can't change your life without changing how you talk you, it, we have to get the word of God in our mouths calling those things that are not as though they are that's how God brings life to dead things and so um, just one one final thing um, it, Andrew and Bianca, why don't you guys stand up? I just, I heard something over you, and, and, and I, I heard, I, yeah, just give them a hand. I, I, I heard um, that you guys are, are, are catalytic, influential, uh, kingdom-releasing leaders, and, and the Lord, he is so pleased with you. You guys have, have, have just taken the high road in so many situations. You have said, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. And, and, and the Lord, is, you are in a season of accelerated favor and increase. And, and, and there, there's going to be uh, just the Lord is settling some things in your hearts just about who you are. And even the message today that I preach, God's going to show you something in that as younger leaders that I wish I would have known <laughs> when I was your age. He's going to show you something about it. You're going to get it. And then you're going to, I just see this massive reproduction of leadership around the world through you guys. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. All right. Someone give a shout to the Lord. And yes. Yeah.